Hi, name, my name is George White. Uh, I'm on Double E Racing. We specialize in upgrading stock suspension on uh, Polaris RZR 900s and about to be 1000. What we found with the stock Fox shocks is, contrary to popular belief, they really are a good shock. I know there's a lot of internet rumors out there that say otherwise. It's simply not true. They need to be tuned. Keith Little and I have done a ton of testing on these things. So has William Yokely. Um, we all come from the Mike Halleck background. Uh, anybody familiar with ATV racing knows who he is. Uh, Mike is the one that actually put this particular kit together. Um, so it, it has a lot of good background that went into it. These shocks have one negative and depending on what you're doing with them, um, you will probably never know it. Um, they have small reservoirs, so you get less oil volume. Um, but other than that, unless you've beaten through racing, you know, racing best in a desert series or something that's gonna put a ton of heat and shocks real fast and for a long time, there's really nothing wrong with these things. We've been running them in the UTV Rally Raid series with, uh, for two years now and haven't had any overheating issues. Um, they, and the Rally Raid is four hours continuous. So we, we put some hard riding on them. An aftermarket shock usually runs anywhere from 2200 to 2500 depending on uh, the shock brand manufacturer. Um, our stuff, an upgrade cost about a little less than $1,100. Plus, all four corners. yes, all four corners. It includes revalve, all new seals, um, some things that we do inside with, um, with valving. Um, the shock's completely revalved. Uh, we do use the stock Fox pist pistons. Um, one of the things, a trick that we found, the Fox pistons, their race pistons, don't have a bleed in them. They use a bleed shim, and this is the stock Fox bleed shim. Um, to use this, it allows a lot of flow, and you have to valve fairly heavily to, to use it. One of the things that Mike figured out was we could replace this with something that he built. He was able to rebuild a shim with specific measurements to give a certain flow. And that allowed us to valve a lot lighter to keep heating the shocks down. And they, the shocks work really, really well. To service a shock, we recommend, depending on how much you ride, um, Typically, we recommend once a year for, for trail riders. Uh, if you're racing, they need to be done every four or five races. Uh, again, it's pretty much the same as a four-wheeler. These might need to be service just a hair more simply because they got so much more weight on, on, on the buggy. Um, they produce a little bit more heat. Besides the internal stuff that we do to the shocks, uh, you also get complete new spring. Again, this is something that's kind of exclusive to Z Brothers. Um, you can also get, William Yokely also had a batch of these made. Uh, it, it's a progressive tender spring that Mike developed. Um, and basically the only two places you can get it is from Z Brothers, myself, or William. Um, so I guess I should say three, not two. Um, but anyway, we use this in conjunction with a crossover. Um, this is our adjustable crossover, so you can adjust where, where the uh, mainspring changes or, or takes effect. Uh, this is pretty critical in UTV racing, full or racing also, I mean. Um, and then the fronts are, we use a single rate front spring. Uh, dual rates are available. Through testing, Keith and I's p opinion both is that the single rates tend to work better on the 900s. Um, for the money, it's not really worth a dual rate because they have to cross over so soon. You don't get the advantage. Um, I guess it's cost per, you know, how much advantage are you getting. We really don't feel like the extra cost is worth it. But I always tell everybody, if you think you need dual rate fronts, we can do them. 
try the single rates first. If you want to upgrade, you can do that later. All right. This is your finished product. I think that's where we got the niche out here, me and George. Your champions, your 2013 Back in our ATV days, we was always into the suspension and you know suspension development. So I think that's what really helped us out with getting the side by side dialed in. And you know I can see it out there when I'm behind other side by sides. I can see them fighting to keep it on the on the track and everything, where we're just you know riding around you know as plush as can be and you know keeping it in one line and it's totally predictable where you know a lot of people are fighting it that don't have the suspension set up like we do.